Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate everyone, you know, showing up. And, and for some reason, I have lost. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Can you guys hear me okay? Can everyone hear me out there? Um, at, for some reason, I thought I lost audio, but I did not. Oh, there it goes. Now I'm getting an echo. Boy, it takes me like 20 minutes to set up just to talk on YouTube. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Hi, Russ. How are you? Thanks for being here. Um, again, I will put, um, I'm going to put the link to join in to, to join in and be on my panel right here in the um, chat. So if you guys want to. Hi, Foxy Lady. Hi, Sherilyn. Um, I just went ahead and put the link up. So if you guys want to join in, hop on panel. That would be amazing. Um, hello, Sandra. Hello, everybody. Um, no, basically, I wanted to talk about the fact that, you know, we I, I have a lot of friends out there in the true crime world. And so many, hi, Dave, so many people have different opinions about the Watts case. And I think it's so funny. And it's not funny. It's tragic that a lot of YouTubers will actually argue and hate each other because they all have different opinions. Well, all of my, all these people who I consider to be my dear friends, we all have different opinions. And I, I sort of wanted to go over everyone's theory. Um, okay, Russ, let me go ahead and add you to the stream. Hi, Russ. Thank you for being here. Welcome. How are Very you? Well, thank you so much for having me. Tanya. You're kidding me. You are kidding me, Tanya. Really? What? I don't have a wrench. What? What? Why what? don't you have a wrench? <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you? <laughs> I'm totally not. kidding. Do you seriously not? Why would I not have done that? Hold on. Let me see if I can wrench you like right now. No, no I can't. Oh. All I can do is put you on a timeout or block you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it after this show. Oh my God. Uh -huh. uh, but we have Unjustified with me tonight, who is my my dear friend, and her channel is amazing. And in fact, she's going to be on later tonight at seven, right, Kim? I think. Um, and I will join yeah. her. She's asked me, and I'm honored every time she asks me to be on. That'll be amazing. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we're going to oh, have the radio talk show host, uh, Crafton. Crafton, isn't that it? Crafton Barnes. Yes, craft. What an interesting name. I like that name. I, I really do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fascinating. Um, and hi, Russ. You, you you said you had some questions about the Watt, Watts case, I believe, or? Uh, yeah. I, I If you want me to uh, do it right now, I thought you wanted to <laughs> talk for a little while, but I'll, I'll go now. Sure. Go right ahead. I, you know, I, sure. My show has no structure, so whatever, <laughs> whatever you have to say is great. Okay. Okay, very good. Kim, it's nice to meet you. What is your show about? It's good to meet you, too. Um, it's just just uh, true crime. True crime, mostly Chris Watts for the minute. I see. Right. Well, that leads into my question. My my show is about true crime, too, but I don't think... Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't think Tanya wants me to uh, announce that show. So No, you can... No, that's fine. Let me... You guys, real quick, let me tell you, I know Russell from um, Grey Gardens, our, our little fan groups back, you know, back in Grey Gardens. Oh, yeah. I was... Yeah, yeah. That's how I actually met him. You great guy. You know, I actually met him in person at a book signing in, um, in the Hamptons, and um, he uh, is... He wasn't interested in the Watts case for a while, but now he is. He, he actually spoke with Diane Down's brother prior to me even talking to him. So thank you for that again, Russell. Um, I really appreciate you uh, kind of introducing me to him. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, so good. Now, and Kim, me. Meet, meet Russ. Russ, meet Kim. I'm sorry. I'm a very rude host, apparently. <laughs> very good to meet you. But um, yeah, so what, what questions? Aw. Okay. No, Russ, that's fine. Go ahead and talk about your channel as well. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, Kim, my my channel is a, a, supposed to be a general true crime too, but it leans towards one specific case, and uh, that specific case is the Charles Manson case. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I've studied Manson since I was 10. Well, in that case, you'll, you'll, you'll want to uh come to my channel because i just got a new member who did uh two to who did two years with susan so <laughs> uh, i look forward to uh introducing you you yes uh, that's, but that's interesting put your channel in the in the chat yeah i'd like it to is true crime and cocktail time all right i want to check that out 
Please do. Thank you. And uh, you can join uh, my page too as well. The uh, it's um, the the life of Charles M. Manson histories, true crimes as well, uh, because there are other true crimes that I'm into and other subjects I'm into. But as far as true crime goes, I would start with the Romanov uh, murders, the Romanov family, the last imperial family of Russia, which uh, I believe Tanya knows about as well. I do. And uh, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, John Dillinger. And I just met, as a matter of fact, the great, I don't know how far it goes back to 1935, but it's the great or the great, great niece of Homer Van Meter, which was one of the bank robbers with John Dillinger. Wow. So, um, you know, yeah, it is. It's very interesting. And I'm, I'm honored to, to be around. And I think I saw the world famous Cher just pop in, and I've been looking for Cher. Forward. How are you? <laughs> hey, guys. Good I was going to say Russell. Russell. Yeah, Russell's a gentleman I know from the Grey Gardens days, you know, back when I uh, was writing the Grey Gardens book. So he's been around for a while, and he's interested in true crime, but I don't like the Manson murders. I don't even like to study about them. I know that's so oh, weird. Oh, God, but, I do. Oh, oh it creeps me out so you much. Just like his funeral, man. They I were, heard you mention my funeral. favorite, one of my favorites, uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, right? That's He's interesting. Crony. Yeah, that's just saying he is. <laughs> but you yeah. know, it's one of those distance things. But yeah, he's getting to Bonnie. Crazy, huh? Absolutely. And hey, good. everybody in chat. Hello, everyone out there. Thank you for all being here. I really appreciate it. And anybody, you know, I keep putting up the link. Anyone who wants to join in, please do. Again, I wanted to have a an open discussion about a bunch of different, you know, theories about the Watts case specifically. And I have an idea idea for a nonprofit organization and I wanted to talk about that as well um, and you know that's where the Rusek family would come in if they you know but I doubt they'll, they'll do anything about it but um, it, it's some just an idea I have um, oh you're on the road yeah rabbit jump in later and I, you know I've been trying to catch one of your lives as well to jump into your show and I never I never catch anyone live what is wrong with well I know what's wrong with me right now we have a, a wonderful thing going on in my household right now and um, I've been so busy Busy, but I do try, <laughs> I try, try to catch everybody if I can. And I, I, you know, I, I end up failing miserably most of the time. But um, yeah, Russ, you said you had a couple questions about the Watts case. Well, these ladies can certainly answer your questions. <laughs> okay, great. So what were you well, thinking? Um, I have uh, watched as much as I can. I have read, read as much as I can up to the moment. Uh, but it occurred to me, how did you get through this case so fast when there are other things that you're still pursuing in cases you've been studying for years. And uh, it occurred to me the reason. And uh, my question will be uh, at the end of the following facts that I'm going to state. He, as a serial killer or a crazy person, he killed his wife and family. Then he lied to the police about it. Then he got caught lying to the police about it. Then he went to either trial or pled, pled guilty because there's no trial documentary yet. And he went to prison. What's the big deal? What is what could possibly be? What is he cute or something? What, what's going on? Oh, heavens no. Yeah. I don't think and, so. uh, what is the Some people the think Christmas, so. Christmas, I don't every, know. every one of the cases that I've studied so far. He looks like a shark. <laughs> he looks like the Mr. Potato Head, I think. But I don't understand the interest because every every case I've studied, there's always a question. Why did Bonnie do it? Why did Richard Nixon do it? Why didn't this one do this? Why didn't that one do that? Why were the Romanoffs so complacent? Why did they not uh, seek out their cause? There's so many questions. But in this case, what question could there possibly be? He must have been asked, did you do it? 20 times and he must have said at some point yes i did yes, you're I right did. so what's the big deal and that's that's where i stand too russ i i always believe that the simplest answer is the correct answer 
And I think that the you guys can answer too, but I think the reason it's such a, a, a studied case is because the, the pieces don't quite fit together properly. Um, yeah, Sharon, and Kim answer, you know, whatever you guys think uh, keeps this case or whatever you want to say about it. Oh, well, I mean, I, I can mm. just tell him that he has the um, popular opinion. He has, you know, and it's okay. That's the opinion he should have. That's what he's heard. That's sure. what happened. And anybody that hasn't dug into the discovery like we all have and dissected every inch of this case would think the same way. Right. There's no right. other way to look at it if all you see is what, you know, you've seen in mainstream media. And even the people that's dissected the case, even then, some of them still believe exactly as he does, right? Correct. So, um, and I do too. I do too. Yeah. I believe Chris did it all right. by himself, and that's always been my opinion too. And I, I try. Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you do, but see, I see it differently, you know, and I know, but that's okay. I mean, we have the differences of opinions here. I see way too many inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. I see way too many lies. I see people that should have been arrested for falsifying police reports that wasn't. Absolutely. Right. So there's so much in this case that was botched and not fully investigated and people that should have been arrested that weren't. So to me, that's a messed up case and it needs further looking into period. It doesn't sit well with me that one of the biggest things that they were telling Chris and Chris's mom and dad and sister was it doesn't matter if he did one, two or three bodies. It, it doesn't matter. But that absolutely matters. You're right. You're right. And a lot of people, you know, again, think that maybe Chris just killed Shanann in defense of her killing the babies. And I, I, again, I don't see that, although it has happened before many times where a woman will kill her children. Um, I, I, gosh, and, and again, like I tell everyone who's on my panel, uh, one of the main reasons I think Chris did it alone is because it seems like a very personal crime, something that he wouldn't share with anyone and something that a stranger would not do. Um, but no, there are so many opinions out there that, I mean, Kim, what, what do you think? What, what do you think happened that night um, from your opinion? I have had so many opinions. <laughs> I, I have so many theories, but each one of them all has a common denominator. And that is Nicole. I don't care to say it. Her inconsistencies and her lies does not sit well with me at all. Her falsifying police reports and not even getting a slap on the wrist for it doesn't sit well with me at all. Right. Right. So, and that, and yeah. Ross, that that said, said, right. That said, and if I'm she was saying, worried, whatever she wants to say, oh, she sent nude pictures or whatever. I could see deleting that. That could be backed up. Okay. Well, you have only a hundred things deleted versus your entire phone history. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I mean, that's obstruction of justice. And uh, Rourke said himself that she hindered the investigation by doing that. And then she turned right around and she lied and falsified police reports. She did. That and that, crazy. you know, and, and what I, again, what I think the reason I think she did all that was because she was terrified of being you know, looking more guilty than she was. She kind of probably knows she's a jerk. You know what I mean? Because anyone would. Well, maybe yeah, not. Maybe and, not. And I agree. That's possible. Right. Too. At the same time, there is proof that they didn't do their jobs. That is falsifying police reports. And she done it not just once. And it wasn't just her that did it. It's like right. everyone that said they were with Chris falsified police reports just look who she was googling amber frey okay for some right. reason yeah people didn't like amber frey but because we seen she was innocent we all saw with our own eyes and our we heard with our own ears like she th she thought that he was single so she blended back into society fine right and and they didn't she should have maybe followed the lead if she was innocent and she should have just turned everything in because I think people would have understood even if there was a text that looked bad. I'm sure there was messages that didn't make Amber look great either. Amen. Amen. And then, then the fact that uh, Kobach told her himself, 
Well, we need to see where your location. We need to make sure you was not anywhere near Chris that morning. And she's like, oh, but then when they get her stuff back, it does show she was in that area. And don't come at me with that pain. She pained in Frederick. That's all I need to know. And I, right. So, I'm going to discuss that actually probably on yours later if you want me to. But I yeah. was given a reason why her phone pinged. And the reason does come from Chris Watts. You're kidding me. Uh, Very interesting. Oh, does it have anything to do with what I was thinking that she was stalking them? Um, that is in I mean, part that now. Chris oh. had said that she she was stalking and she has gone over there and there is I hope I hope Heidi, aka Nikki's in the chat. I'll text you in a minute. But um yeah, she um Chris had mentioned to a friend that was friends before any of this happened back when Shanann worked at the children's hospital and everything too, and said that, yeah, Nicole would go and park at, in the back of the houses where the houses weren't developed and stuff and, and sneak in through the basement. Um, yeah, I've heard that. Wow. But yeah, there, Chris did say a reason why her phone pinged there and yes, she was going to the house. Yeah. Wow. For, a re for something. Yeah, right. right I just right. want to make sure it's okay that I say this with the person because yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, talking. go ahead and make sure before you reveal anything. Yes, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> but and I can and I don't support Nikki. I am like I think she's guilty AF. But this the reason is I I could see it. I still don't fully believe it because I Chris lives, but I could see it being true also. Sure. Right, and Nikki could have been no nothing more than, say, Charles Manson, the mastermind. She may have not touched anyone with her own You're hands. You're right. At the same time, Charlie died in prison just for masterminding things, just for saying, you know, this is what we need to do. This is what needs to be done. Oh, and absolutely. And I think Nicole right. probably came out and told him, you need to kill your family. No, I don't think she did. I no, do I don't not. either. I do not think she did that. However... I think she knew Chris well enough to know that subtle hints with him would lead to drastic measures. She had already think, done that. You think she basically had his number and knew that if she were to drop subtle hints that didn't have anything to do with murder, that it might go that far in his mind then? I do think she did because she spent a lot of time with him. She knew how vulnerable, how gullible, and just to be quite honest, how stupid he was and how leading he was. He was easily to put on strings and you be the puppet master. Oh, sure. Because he was very gullible. Russ, what do you think about all this talk about the mistress? How do you feel about her? As far as I feel, uh, what somebody, what uh, Kim just said, how stupid he was for some reason in general, in every case or most cases, or any case of whatsoever, um, somehow or another, the criminal is assumed to be a PhD in very serious crime. And as if they studied crime back to the seventh century. And a lot right. of these people, like every single member of the Manson family, without exception, every one of them was stupid. Just uh -huh. fucking stupid. That's brainwashed. It. Brainwashed. And right. Well, when you read further, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get more into that as well. But the point being, again, Kim, what you said, stupid. Yes, quite frankly, stupid. And as far as the mistress goes, yes, we've all known mistresses throughout history who really controlled the strings uh, or other people who controlled the strings. According to some people, Rasputin was the man who was responsible for Russia getting into World War I or staying out of World War I. So all of these things I had not considered, but of course it is a possibility. And yes, even, uh, I don't know if you know the Alger, his case for a while, his wife was suspected to be the wrongdoer and he was covering for her. And as a matter of fact, Believe it or not, I got the grand jury minutes and he said, well, why are you saying all of this stuff? Are you covering for your wife? Because you would not be the first one in history who ever covered for his wife. So if they asked a question like that in 1949, damn, 
it, it's going to happen, you know, 50 years later. People aren't that much different. It's just whether or not they had a radio or a TV or a stove. Um, so a lot of these points are extremely, extremely good. And it simply means I've got more research to do. Yeah, that's what I mean. Until you actually look into the case and see all the kind of like the not so obvious, then you just really that's the only opinion you can have is the opinion that you have. It's like, why is people even worried about this case? He said he did it. Well, yeah, he said he did it at the same time. Why did he say he did it? Did he just want to get it over with? His his defense team were telling him it's not going to matter whether you killed one or four. You're still going to get the death penalty, period. No, exactly. Right, right, right. And um, no, I don't know. I see Megan out there. She's got um, a very... Very different, a very fascinating theory. If you'd like to jump up here, anybody really with Megan your theories, no matter how they, you know, what they are. Cool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and there's so many ways to look at this. And, and the problem is that nothing fits. I mean, it, it doesn't fit. And, and that's the only thing that gives me wiggle room to think, well, there might be something else that happened. But I, you know, I, I just don't know. None of us know. And it, Oh, gosh, if only the man would tell the truth and why he won't, unless he's protecting someone, you guys, you're right, you know, you're right, unless he's trying to keep someone's name out of it. But does he have that? Is is, is he that kind of a person? I don't think he's, Um, I don't know, I don't think he has an emotion in his body anywhere. So, <laughs> Well, Debbie just, she, she had a good point there. She said, what are the things Watts said that he'll take to his grave? What could be worse than what he did? Well, true. The way I look at that little situation that he said right there, things I'll take to my grave, maybe it's not worse. Maybe that's not what he's meaning. Maybe he's meaning I have secrets I will take to my grave. Maybe he's not meaning it's right. quote unquote right. worse than what he's already said, but it's something that he will never say. We all have secrets we'll take to our grave. And maybe that's how he right. meant Right. And I don't even know because I, hey, again, Nikki. oh, Nikki's here. Again, he mentioned um, the thing with the where did he get the oxycodone? Um, again, I, I know for I'd say 99.9 percent .9 certainty that it was Shanann's old medicine that she that there was some in the basement. Again, there was some upstairs in a medicine cabinet. But yet he said he will take the, the, the that information to his grave. And the way that I see Chris and I don't know if we have any psychiatrists or psychologists out there. I don't know. Um, oh, I haven't seen Dr. B in a while, but, you know, it, it, I think that what Chris thought was the way he was trained to think the, the, the image that he portrayed himself as being was a good person who would never break rules. And yes, murder is a huge huge rule to break, obviously, but additional rules, like I think that he would almost be up, you know, think that he would get in trouble or Shanann would get in trouble for number one, not using all of her old medicine. Number two, but using a lot of old Tanya. medicine at one time. You know, isn't that weird? I don't know. No, 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 no. It's not weird. Nikki's saying that Chris didn't get the oxy or was the one to give it to her. Just, I mean, really? just what, yeah, just I'll putting that out there. If I may, in yeah. my studies, what I like to apply is the 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 day to day common sense approach, uh, like saying who does that? That's ridiculous. Who does that? That's that's absurd. Sure. Or, why would he do this or why would he do that? Uh, one time I saw a case solved uh, because of an SUV door and the way the the uh, the assailant described it, saying something like, "I opened the door." And then I slowly crept out and kept as quiet as I could. Well, that's not true because anybody who's driven an SUV knows you never open the door quietly. You open it and then you hold out your leg to kick it, to keep it from bouncing back at you. And sure. it makes noise. It makes right, noise. Right, right. And in this case, the oxycodone, I'll give you a sample of a story with oxycodone. And it's real simple. I know a person who had three minor surgeries in three years. And you know, with these little surgeries, they always give you 500 milligrams of oxycodone or some derivative. And in case right. of more pain than the, than the next two days, give me a call. So you have 
you know, 10 pills one time, you take one or two, then the pain goes, then you leave it in the medicine cabinet. I yes. am not one of those people who keeps, you know, who cleans out medicine cabinet based on dates. I and don't either. Go yeah. for another one. And then you go for another one. And pretty soon you got three bottles of, it's just like a refrigerator with yes. three cartons of milk. One carton right. fills up one third of the glass. Second carton, second third of the glass. Third carton is empty. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's a common thing that happens to everybody. And that's why it's a comedy thing, because everybody gets the it's very common. Right. So when she says something like that, that leads me to believe uh, when if she said something like that, that leads me to believe, yes, it's absolutely possible. It could have been laying around, just could have been right. laying around. Right. And that's what I was told um, by someone who had actually spoken to Chris. So I, but then again, Chris lies about everything. So we don't know. You know, we don't know. Um, let's see. Shanann was a liar and hit. Oh, and this is another. Hi, Nikki. That's another um, thought, too. A lot of people believe that Shanann was a liar and did not have. I think that you're being tongue in cheek there, of course. But um, I, I, I don't know. We don't know. We With Shanann, so I've been um lately getting back into the gypsy rose case a little bit where the mother had munchausen syndrome by proxy and i don't think you know it's not as common as what it seems to be that particular disorder i don't think shanann you know see i don't know i i don't think she i think she was very 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 worried that her children would be sick so any little sniffle any little anything she would rush them to the doctor you know because she was so overly worried about them and as far as herself there was something wrong Wrong with her but it, it, it may have been lupus maybe someone simply gave her a diagnosis and said this is what it looks the most like i don't know i really don't know um but i don't you know i don't know i don't i, I don't think she was a liar i, I believe she, I think she was a saleswoman very, and um therefore low self-esteem and i believe she tried to cover that I low self-esteem very low thing. but how big of a very saleswoman much. was she because they were in debt quite a bit and the thing is is if i'm selling things like she was selling which i'm sorry honestly it's pyramid schemes everything she's yeah. selling you go door to door for that and almost all her neighbors have never even seen her or her children outside that house Right. But your job right. is to sell pyramid schemes. Shouldn't you be going door to door? I know I would. And I don't know if that's how um, Lavelle works. It is it not mostly online because you can reach a thousand people in twenty minutes rather than you know what I mean. I, I, mean, I don't know. No, if I was working with a pyramid scheme and I was getting money commission on selling these or however it worked, you bet your ass I'm hooking all my neighbors on this shit too. True, hooking them. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yeah, when um, I'm I, being honest. I used to sell Avon, and we had these little signs we had to put in our front yard and on our car. I mean, sure. and I'm pretty sure Avon is MLM. I mean, it is. It is, and I yeah. I went to a meeting um, to get to start. No, it wasn't Avon. It was something. Was it Mary Kay? Maybe when I was a teenager, you know, an older teenager. Yeah. yeah. And it is definitely a pyramid scheme. Um, a lot, probably a lot like Lavelle. And um, you know, I mean, she was good at what she did. I, I think that is true. Um, but okay, let's see. The own rabbit. But do you not? You guys don't think that she would lie? Because there was, if you guys even go on Reddit, there's old. There's old, um, like, Facebook posts that she was even posting saying she had no money. Somebody, like, her grandma was dying of cancer and she needed plane tickets or, or something. But she's living sure. in this big mansion, right? And you couldn't get plane tickets to go to your grandma's funeral. Now, I don't know if somebody else did that on her account when she was alive. Very possible. No idea. But um, I don't know. I just... She helped cover embezzlement and cooking books for Dirty South. So would we really put it past her to fake something that would actually help her sell these energetic patches and bars and shakes? See, I don't I'm know. I'm not trying to be mean or bash her. Yeah, I'll say what you're I, saying. I mean, I'm, that's... No, I definitely see what you're saying. No, I yeah. do. I, welcome, Miss Pierre. I don't think Aww. anybody's perfect in this case whatsoever. I don't think anybody's perfect, period. No, and of I think Shanann had plenty of flaws, you know. She wasn't the perfect person. Um, I definitely no, don't none think none of us are. Right. Exactly. 
but right. that doesn't and, yeah. and rabbit rabbit dog so the only things i'm certain about is that shenan was not responsible for the kids passing i agree and the second confession yeah, is I don't think is there's true. many people that does believe that i mean i know any nobody up here on this panel thinks shenan killed her no, kid. no i don't kid believe kid. that it, no not one bit i don't believe yeah. that i do not and russell do you think she did uh, yeah it's not that I think that she killed it or did not, because as I said, I clearly have some some research to do. But uh, right, and that's and with that's yours, that's you right. might find that she did. See, yeah, but right. correct, find that she right? Did. Exactly. Now, in this case, I would go to anybody who Tanya is a member of this club, and uh, you nice people I just met. So anybody who has kids knows the reality of life and the craziness of life that happens when the kid appears on the planet earth. And the best way I can explain what I mean is I knew Susan Smith the day that she pronounced her story. The minute yeah. I heard the story, I knew she was lying. And if she's lying like that, certain people know how to tell certain lies, certain lies, meaning lies that always provoke investigation or checking out. And her lie was, I don't know if you remember it, her lie was, I just was so stressed out, I had to go for a drive. I felt like driving would really calm me down. So I got the kids in the car and we took off. Nobody, nobody with kids, I don't care who you are, nobody just takes their kids and throws them in the car to go for a ride. That's ridiculous. It takes a half hour to close the window because you still haven't decided what juice you're going to take and who wants to sit by the window and who's going to sit in the front, who's going to sit in the back. It's impossible. And when True. she said that, I knew she was lying. I, and I was waiting for the rest of it to come out. And But that lie, that lie, she could tell it because most people reacted like, oh God, I know how that feels. But I know how that feels, but I would never take my kids with me to relax. That's for damn sure. So they tell <laughs> lies that they know they can get away with. True, 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 true. Um, someone, or actually it was it was Cher who said, um, Shanann lied about her age and Chris went along with it. The only lie I've ever told in my life, I think, is about my age. So <laughs> So well, I, I get that, but but no, actually, I just, I just kind of—that's weird, yeah. though. You lied to his whole family by like ten years, I yeah. believe. Oh, that's right. She, that's right. She said she was like forty-five or whatever, and she was thirty-two, or who knows what. Or yeah, I, yeah, I that thought is she kind said of weird. She was yeah, like and, and, twenty-eight, but she was thirty-five or something. Yeah, it was something like that. But I just don't get it when. You're yeah, married. Why are you either. lying about your age to the family? I get like if you're out somewhere and someone that else, is hey, weird. Are you? And I think you she lie. did that as a joke. No. no. Yeah, I don't understand that myself. I really don't. No, I. I mean, even though I do kind of, you know, I dance around the topic of my age. I don't. <laughs> I don't really lie about. But you know, talking about Susan Smith, you're right. I thought she was guilty the second that I, I watched, you know, the original interview. And you know, I hate to say this, but Diane Downs, I thought she was guilty too until I talked to James, her brother, about. Um, again, if those of you who don't know, I'm writing a book with James. Uh, Diane Downs' brother about the case, and I've talked to Diane a few times, and I, I admitted to her, I told, I'm so sorry, I thought you were guilty. Um, but looking at all the evidence and looking at Diane in a I different light, I is. don't think she did anything. I don't yeah. know about that. And, and, I and, went deep into that case and, too, Tanya, real deep. Yes, yes, me too. And um, real, the same thing. I, did you hear her daughter confess that she was coerced and told what to say? Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. That's what, yeah, when you had yes. her brother on, yes. I totally exactly. changed my and, mind about um, everything. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and the fact that the kid did, I mean, she was a little girl. She had just been recovered from hor horrifying injuries from gunshot wounds. And um, it, as an older person, as an adult, you know, she said she didn't, that wasn't true. She was talked into saying that. And they, you know, what, what's a little sick little girl going to do? Um, yeah. And the same thing with Darlie Routier. I I think that woman is innocent, as innocent as I am. You know, I don't think that she 
killed or hurt anyone, but that's, you know, maybe an unpopular opinion, but um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I lean towards innocent with her too, but I still got to read those court transcripts, you know. Sure. I think sure. And I think that both. Was, was innocent. innocent. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, uh, that what convicted her was, um, forgive me, uh, uh, Kim, I hope you're not from Texas. Are you from Texas? No, no, I'm not. I'm from Alabama. Okay, good. So I think it was just hard as <laughs> Texas that convicted that convicted her. The, the prosecutor just came up with a good case and a good theory, and he could actually explain somebody severing their own jugular vein. And, you know, they just bought it because right. it's just hard ass. That's all there is to it. Right. Right. And I think that um, Darlie, you know, again, Darlie and Diane were convicted mm -hmm. in the court of public opinion because of their behavior. Right. And I think that they both, especially, you know, Diane, you know, a soft, um, almost shy humor, a, 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 a humorous a personality where she's actually, you know, not very outgoing, but, it, and so it makes her come across as being a little bit weird. Now, you can be weird, but you're not a killer. So I, I've learned so much working with her brother. Um it's just fascinating how it, you know, it completely changed my mind about that entire case. And I see Darlie as being the same type of victim of the justice system that she, she didn't do it. She definitely didn't do it. I don't care if she's smiling and, you know, spraying silly string or singing, whatever. She didn't do it. So, yeah. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I'm all made up for Darlie, but I don't, I don't know. know about Darlie. I don't know. I have to read the court transcripts, but. Right now, I'm going towards innocent, just really because she almost died herself. Did she, though? She did. I agree. I got to uh, look at that one again. I well, thought her injuries were yeah, just almost. extreme. Oh, she was, she well, was beat the No, hell that's hard. Diane Downs that got shot in yeah, the arm. Diane, that's the one that I went into deep. I mean, real deep in her case. I was even going to get a hold of her brother as well. Um, her dad. Also had an interview with her brother at one point. He's gone now. But I started seeing Diane as possibly innocent too. And that's when I backed off because I I just couldn't make myself believe that. Crazy, I know. But I Diane, yeah. Diane's demeanor and her character is shady as hell. It I mean, seems that way. Right. And, and that's what I always thought. You know, I didn't even question it. Until I started talking to James. And there are so many items that, in my opinion, point directly towards her innocence that they ignored or wouldn't allow into evidence. And, um, yeah, it, it's a very convoluted case. I agree. And her, her personality and her behavior is very off. It's not the way you and I would act. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of Diane, and and as and I'm like I'm with you. When I was digging into her case, it started looking like she was innocent. Yeah, it's like, wow, I, I can't do this. I just can't, just because of the way you know the way she was acting when she was reenacting it for the police, and she was making it to be a joke. Yes, that that made me nauseous. Exactly, That's when I backed out. I can't do this. I can't do this. Man, I couldn't even, right. just to do that reenactment, if that was my kids, I don't even know if I could do the reenactment, let alone sit there and laugh about it. No, I would say, what What the heck you want me to reenact when my children were, you know, shot and one to death? No, I mean, but then again, being weird and, you know, different does not make her guilty. And I think, again, it was a, you know, I will giggle. You're right. Out of nowhere. I mean, you're totally right there. I mean, right. that, that's concurrent. I mean, you can be an idiot all day long, but that doesn't make you a murderer. Oh, definitely. Exactly. I mean, that's like Stephen Avery. You know, I mean, and, and again, I giggle inappropriately. And all, 
all my haters tell me this all the time. Oh, um, my friend Russ, by the way, he had low battery on something, so he had to he'll, he'll try to dive back in. But you know, I think that uh, again, Darlie and and um, Diane were convicted in a court of public opinion, and and um, that's unfortunate. And you know, now that I've also gone back and watched Small Sacrifices, the movie that was made from the Anne Rule book with Farrah Fawcett in it about Diane, and. Now that I watch it now, knowing what I know, it almost looks like Farah was portraying her as being completely innocent. And that was something she brought, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I think that maybe she was trying to make a statement, but maybe maybe just because I, I've looked at the evidence from a different angle now. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've been fascinated by these stories about women who would actually hurt i mean gosh even to swat your child on the bottom you feel like you're dying you know how could i don't understand yeah. i always did wonder why if she really wanted to kill her children why did she speed and start screaming yes. at the hospital when she could have pulled in anywhere it would have prolonged it so that her kids would have died exactly like if she pulled into a gas station instead of a hospital like it would take longer to get her kids help or something like that Exactly. Or she could have pretended she was knocked out on the pavement and just laid outside her car for half an hour yeah. or whatever. Instead of getting out know? of the car and screaming for help to get yes. people to the car. Yeah. So exactly. I always really remember wondering about that. Yeah, why on earth would she do that? The, the, no, there's so many ways she could have delayed herself. And and one of the points of evidence was that it took her, what was it, 15 minutes to get to the hospital from the location where the children were shot, where they were all shot. But then the police officers drove that route, and it took them 20 minutes. But we didn't hear anything about that. We only heard that it took her 15 minutes to get there. Well, it was 20 minutes away. You know, well, so, She was um, even speeding to get there. Yeah. Exactly. So ridiculous stuff um, that I think they just, you know, they had it in for this, just like with Darlie. I think they had it in for her, too, because of, you know, her personality. Again, she's a little odd, a little unusual. Um, so people took her the wrong way. I, they, She wasn't what they thought she should have been. And that's. Right, right. Really unfortunate. Um, so, yeah, um, the car was impounded and owed. Or are we talking about Kaylee Anthony, Casey, you know, the mother of Casey Anthony? Um, yeah, I know. I, you know, Mia, I think that I think Casey was, again, like with the Watts case, I think Casey was it, it, guilty on her own. No one else took part in anything. Oh, yeah. I, stop! I think. <laughs> How could you? Or, here's, my, here's my alternate theory. That the, the baby drowned in the pool and Casey simply wrapped her up and put her in the trunk. And that's, you know, the only thing she did was conceal um, or the improper handling of a dead body or whatever that crime would be. Um, and unfortunately, they didn't charge her with lesser crimes. I'm putting up the link again. Um, I think Russ just asked for the link to get backstage again. Um, but um, let's see here. So who found her not guilty? No, I don't answer. know. Um, Mia, who are, I'm I'm missing chat because I'm an airhead, as we all know. I can't speak to that either right <laughs> Go now. Go on, Cher. I'm sorry. Oh, I was asking asking Mr. Cher what he thought of NK now. Yes, I want to know. In regards to what? Well, before you thought she was completely innocent, then Recently, you were kind of like, it's possible. I could see it being possible. But now you've been digging a little bit more into things. Now, what do you think? All I keep finding is people putting BS videos up that sh she was here, she was there, she was doing this, doing that, and none of it's true. So I'm going back the other way, if anything. But she's done some shady crap. I'll admit that. But she wasn't in the house on that camera. She wasn't in the garage yanking a toddler back into that garage. She wasn't in the airport, like everyone keeps saying. I don't know why people got to make this stuff up. If she's so guilty and it's so obvious, why do you got to make stuff up? Yeah, I mean, there's right. enough of proof right. and evidence and facts of things that could put her there more so than the things that's being made up and speculated. Mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, that's true. The truth and facts no, speaks much louder than all this speculation. No, I do not believe that George Anthony hurt anyone. Not 
No, 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 no. Not one bit. Look at look at all the video of him talking to Casey in jail and, you know, he's walking on eggshells. Parents who are abusive do not walk on eggshells around, you know, they, they walk on eggshells around their emotionally abusive children, but not the other way around. There's no way. That man didn't hurt anyone. Um, no. um, statistically, people that are guilty involved in cases, though, are the ones that try to commit suicide, which Mr. Anthony did try to do. True. However, I think he was just so, the, the man was so emotional um, that he simply uh, was an emotional wreck because he lost his baby granddaughter and then his daughter was probably guilty of killing her. Um, that's what I see with him. That's all I see because th those those two were really good grandparents and good parents. And I think Cindy let, let Casey get away with a lot of stuff. And um, this is coming from a mom who knows exactly what kind of daughter that would be, you know. Um, but I, I think that overall they were very good parents. Very good grandparents. I There's nothing, no, no, there's no hint there whatsoever, in my opinion, that George hurt anybody. Not at all. Uh, welcome back, Russ. Thanks for coming back in. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up two points um, that I would like yeah. to delve into if it's okay with everybody. Sure. Um, I'd like everybody to keep the uh, crazy behavior convictions because I must say, how can you act like that or how can you allow yourself to act like that when what has happened just has happened, even though you have been accused of this? If it were me, whether I acted crazy or not, I would stay in the house. And if anybody wanted to do an interview with me, I would call like the detective in charge of my case and say, the news wants to do a, 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 an interview with me and I don't want to do it. Um, so that's explaining uh, crazy behavior. And on the uh, Casey Anthony case, I was wondering if anybody had seen the videos, the video interviews of Casey's cellmate in jail. Hmm. No. No, I have not. I don't know why, okay. but I have well, not. This is interesting, and I think you'll find it fascinating. It's a five-part uh, interview. It's only 15 or 20 minutes long. The The prisoner in question is named Maya Durkovic, and okay. she's clearly just a girl. She's from the uh, uh, Russia would be Eastern Europe, so not Russia, but like Georgia or something like that, so she's you know, that's where a family comes from, came to this country, got involved with the wrong crowd, and she ended up in jail for 30 years. Now, she's there in jail, and she contacts the authorities because she got information on Casey. The authorities contact her and say, well, what do you want to tell us? I can tell you that Casey Anthony committed the murder. She did it herself. She didn't even wow. know she did it until she got home that night. And then she goes into the details and they, again, they just make total sense to me. Now, the reason I believe the prisoner in question, who I'm still trying to find um, via the internet, um, she has no reason to lie. Why? Because she didn't take anything for the information. She refused. She said, I'm lucky I got 30 years. At least I can get a you know slice of pizza when I, you know, in 30 years. But I'm not sure. looking for any reduction or anything. That's fine. So in other words, she did this just for the hell of it. And she committed one of the worst crimes in prison you can do, which is being a rat or a snitch. Sure. And what she said was that Casey, just so she could go out, and she had done it in the past, but she obviously overdosed the kid. She would soak a rag in chloroform, put it over the baby's wow. face. When the baby would sleep, she would lift it, then go out, then come back in time for the baby to, you know, lay awake. Now, all of us who have children, we have done some crazy things to cure our kids and even thought of crazier things to cure our kids. I can't stand children screaming in pain. I can't take right. it. And uh, some of the things that I thought of in doing while he was screaming in pain, you never think you're going to think of things like that. And this Girl was clearly, in my opinion, ju just troubled from the day she came out. So, right. She was uh, very spoiled little up, girl, right? Right. Yeah. So please look up those videos and maybe we can take it up again. But I believe her totally. I believe her totally. And what does everybody say about the weird behavior or catch me up, please? 
On which weird behavior? From from whom? Diane. Uh, Diane mostly, of course, because uh, we're both involved in that. But right. anybody crazy behavior after they've been uh, accused of a crime. The Manson girls, crazy behavior. Why? Well, I think that, you know, with Diane and with Darley, they were just, they had quirky, weird personalities. And, um, you know, again, I've spoken with Diane and she still kind of does. She has a little bit of a weird, quirky personality. I have a question for Russell quick. Yeah. Russell, why did this inmate say this after Casey had already served her sentence? Was she already charged and served her sentence? Or why would she only get three years done? 30. Casey only did three years. She's oh, out free. The, the three years, the three years she got was for lying to the police and some other smaller charges. I mean, they they. Were, I gotta look up that uh, interviews then. Yeah, I mean, it, it it seemed to me like there were parking violations or tickets for some nonsense or whatever. And uh, if she did three years, but I don't know exactly what she was convicted of. And the prisoner did say this to a reporter. In, uh, I forget the town, is somewhere in Florida, the city, somewhere in Florida, the Disneyland town. and um, Orlando. Orlando, right. So uh, the reporter there was well known in, in there, and she gave that interview, um, and she didn't get anything for it. So in my opinion, she did it because she found out something in jail. The, blood, the drugs and the blood and the gangs and all of that stuff was just washed from her body. And she, you know, she was just like, "What am I holding out for? This is ridiculous." And she expressed empathetic feelings for the children because she said she had a little brother and sister, and she can't imagine having a monster for a mother like Casey Anthony, who couldn't even cry for her baby. Fascinating. I, I, you know, I will definitely look that up. And and someone asked me who was Russ. Russ is a gentleman I've known um, for a few years because we were part of the Great Gardens stand. Um, and then I met him at, actually at a book signing out in the Hamptons um, at one point. And Megan, welcome, Megan J. How are you? Hey, Hi, Hello. thank you. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> hey, Megan. Being here. Oh no, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. So oh, we're I might talking just... about. We're talking... I'm having a hard time with my, is it my Wi-Fi guys or am I losing? I keep losing audio from people. I don't know if it's me. I keep going in and out. Uh-oh, did we lose Tanya? <laughs> she gone. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. Okay. What I was saying was I was just going to maybe, I don't know anything about, these cases that you guys are talking about. I mean, I know a little bit about um, Kaylee Anthony, but I might just listen and maybe just chime in here and there. Oh, it's that's okay. You have a, a, an incredibly interesting theory about the Watts case. Do you want to kind of run over that? I, I know there's so many different details, but do you want to talk about that briefly? Because it's different than anything, anybody else up here, I believe. Um. Yeah. I mean, I would love to, I'm just trying to figure out a way to do it where I, I don't, it's difficult for me to go on other channels just because I don't do it want like to. like you do on my channel. There we well, go. How you were doing well, it. Well, even then, I, I, even then I feel like I'm censoring myself just because I just, I don't want to get anybody's channel in trouble. You know, I mean, that sounds crazy, but um, oh. it's true. So, because um, I'm at risk with my channel just talking about my theory. So that's why it makes it difficult for me to go on other channels, even though I love <laughs> I love when I'm invited to go on channels. So sure, um, sure. That's why I said maybe I'll just chime in here and there if something Perfect. comes up. If that's okay. Oh, yeah, there, yeah, there is a lot to my theory, definitely. So yes. um but yeah, so right. we'll we'll just we'll play it by ear here. If that's okay. okay very good. Very, very good. Cool. Okay. Um, thank you, Megan. But no, I think that, um, I, again, we all have such different opinions about the Watts case specifically and about other cases as well. But the Watts case is the one that is so hotly contested to the 
point where there are bullies out there, even as Megan mentioned, she has a completely different theory, but she should be allowed to. But there, you know, there are, there are bullies out there who will be, are, are ruthless. And even, it's so funny because the bullies who were chasing me, and I think they've kind of laid off a little bit, but they were, um, I, they agreed with me about my theory that Chris Watts did all the, everything on his own. But yet, yeah, yeah, but so there are so many mean, mean people out there. You're kind of like, you know, mean people without a cause that it's very difficult to really talk about anything uh, with the Watts case specifically. It is such a hotly contested case that um, it, I, I don't understand. That's that's one thing I don't know. Well, I know that again, back with the John Bonet case, um, I, I've had Trisha Griffith from Web Sleuths on my show before, and th that was 25 years ago, and I've known her that long. Um, I know that with the John Bonet case, everybody would argue the same way. There were, was the camp who believed that one or both of the parents committed the murder, and another camp that believed that it was an intruder, and it was they were so ruthless and so mean to each other. Um, very much like the Watts case. Um, um, because that was a very bizarre case, which the pieces fit one direction, but then it didn't make sense. So um, I think that goes on everywhere. But back then, the internet, when, you know, no one was on YouTube. It was all just, you know, little forums. that you There was no Facebook. There was no real social media. So you just basically find forums online, like websleuths.com, which is where I met Trisha, and, and, you know, the whole thing unfolded. But um, so yeah, I don't know. And, and the other thing I wanted to talk about today briefly is, um, I don't know, I'm always brainstorming. And I think that, um, you know, some people mention, and I believe this is true, that Shanann had some, um, she had some clues as to what Chris was doing or what his thought process might have been, or there were some, there were some signs that this might, even though there was no domestic violence in the home, and I believe there was not any prior to the worst of the domestic violence where he killed his whole family, um, I think that there were, there were some cues or some things that she could have recognized or gotten help with. Um, do you guys agree with that? That there, there might have been something that she could have seen prior to the murder? Well, she did know she did mention to her friends that uh, there was a lot of behavioral changes. Yes, but definitely. I can't see how anyone could take that and make the leap from that to my life is in danger. No, you're right, and that would be difficult to do exactly. And um, yeah. but I think you no, know, because there was there was no hint whatsoever that he would be violent again, especially in the worst way of all by you know murdering your entire your family. But what if there was an organization that women could, in my book, No Inclination, I mentioned a, an organization that one of the main characters started that was called Sandy Shadow. And what I was thinking was, what if there's an organization we could, you know, and I don't, God, heaven knows I don't have time to do this. But again, this is where the Rusek family could, you know, fall into place. But I, unfortunately, I don't think, you know, that's their mindset right now. But um, called Shanann Shadow, where there were hotlines open. Um, and we, you know, we could have volunteer therapists, we could have volunteer investigators, where a woman could call and say, well, my husband is behaving this way and I, I'm really kind of worried. Um, and maybe a therapist could come. To, he, Chris wouldn't take, he refused to do couples therapy. Well, what if a therapist would come into the house and at least speak to the woman? And um, then the man would see the woman is talking to someone and that she might be on top of what's going on. But there are so many things, I think, if we could prevent one, one family from suffering the same fate you know what i mean i don't know i i don't know what do you guys think about something like that and, and you know giving real help to a woman who even even if she suspects that her husband's having an affair and if shanann were to tell this organization all this stuff what should i do you know whether she was telling her friends maybe they could have provided some resources to help her get away when she felt that it had gone gotten to a head and something might happen or was there not enough, were, were there not enough then, clues? Then it's documented, you mean, at least? Exactly, that it is documented, yes. And that they would have professional help. So, again, volunteer therapy, you know, people who work in, in, in psychotherapy. 
Um, and then in the end, if the woman does need to get away, there would be um, volunteers taking the people to a, to a safe location. And so if Shanann came home that night and said something's up with Chris, I'm going to pack, I'm calling you guys because I'm packing up my kids and I'm going to leave right now. Can someone come get me? That could have been arranged too. But then again, I don't know if she had that much of a warning, but what if she did? You know, what if everything she was telling her friends, um, if she told it to, again, a professional therapist or someone who worked in the field of domestic abuse, you know, again, volunteers were to hear the story, they might see the red flags that she could not see. I, I don't know. Is that even something that, you know, would, would work with that? Because there is nothing right now, unless you have been abused, there's not really any sort of a shelter. There's not really any way to get away from that, that I'm talking man or woman, but primarily right. this would happen to women through, you know, men who are much bigger than us would be the people who would, you know, cause the harm, obviously. Um, but, and not only that, you know, take it one step further, they could, and, and what I did, wouldn't want it to turn into would be a, 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 a um, platform for women who just think their husband are cheating <laughs> to call and get help about their cheating husband. That wouldn't be, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm always brainstorming and I want, I believe there was something someone could have done about what happened in the Watts case. And so basically an advocate because so I have a real an advocate. advocate that I work with, but you, right. like you said, you have to come from abuse for the county to set you up with that. Right. Exactly. There's no one. I can't just be like, well, I'm with this boyfriend. He's kind of sketchy. He hasn't hit me yet, but I think he might. So exactly. I see but what you're saying. At right. What if there was something and even earlier intervention so that, again, they could dispatch someone to the home, a social worker, again, volunteer work all around. But if they could dispatch someone to the home and even if the husband walks in and sees his wife talking to someone, even though he refuses to do counseling, he might be sucked into the conversation or. It does not involve me. Okay. Uh oh, what's that? Who's that? With I'm the kid? sorry, ladies. I'm terribly sorry. I just taught. Daniel, D Daniel, oh God, I just taught him not to interrupt the grown ups, and naturally you can see the Hi, Daniel. <laughs> Hi, little boy. Don't interrupt Hi. the right. He's brilliant. He's Hi. Brilliant. Okay. How old is he, Russell? <laughs> Don't need to let the well, he, he tells everybody he's 11, but quite frankly, he's a midget in a kid's suit. He's oh, no. Goodbye, Mr. Cher. Mr. Love you. Mr. Cher left us. Okay. All Was right. I gabbing too much? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm terribly sorry, Tanya. Please continue. No, you're fine. But I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to volunteer to get involved because, you know, uh, I'm a man too. At least that's what they told me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know, but you need to get involved because there are um, uh, domestic violent, violence issues certainly everywhere in the world. And I think that uh, there's a clearance law in the UK where you can ask a background check to be checked to a new boy. That's amazing. That's a good idea too. But again, in Shanann's case, what I'm well, thinking is what could have helped Shanann? And in Shanann's case, Christopher did not have a background. He did not have a history of violence. He certainly did not do anything um, that we know of violent towards um, his family. Um, there's a real cruel irony in someone as crazy as Chris Watts that someone with the least assertive and combative of personalities was capable of the most vicious and obscene. I agree, Rabbit Dog. And no one saw it coming, but Shanann did see things coming. Um, not, not she thought she saw a problem with the way things were. And he, he I think that a spouse or a significant other who immediately changes their personality or the way they behave towards you know towards you, or if there are any little clues what if a woman could reach out to a professional you know system of people who could give her some advice and some help um yeah, i don't know or at least give her support and say that okay you know and it, i could why don't you come talk to us bring your girls let's talk or i will come in i prefer that they go to the home and, but then again, if you do have real violent men or, or, you know, again, I'm saying men versus women because this happened to a woman and I think it would primarily apply to a woman. Um, what if there were people who could be dispatched to the home? And, and I'm talking about prior to any violence, not, you know, if, if you're not yet a victim of domestic violence, but yet you sense something is completely wrong 
been completely off, and I, I do believe with all my heart that Shanann did. Hey, Mexi. Um, so I, I wonder if there would be a something like that we could, you know, where they could step up the protection of women before before anything happens, because I think Shanann had clues. She knew that something was really, really wrong. Um, so that's what I was thinking, something called, you know, like Shanann's Shadow or whatever you'd want to name the movement that would um, form a nonprofit so that we could um, maybe provide hope to people who, who, God forbid that anyone else ends up in that position, but we know it's going to happen. Um, let's see here. So sad, her flaws, she was just really trying to save the marriage. That's correct. She was. She was, definitely. Um, then you have CPS. You're right. You're right. That, that's something I didn't consider if the CPS are removing the children. Right. Um, that's something I wouldn't want to deal with. You know, wouldn't want to have to deal with because if a woman, yeah, see, I don't know. It's so hard. Um, Letitia needed mental help. Oh, we're talking about a different case with the Gannon case which is frightening poor baby <clears throat> unjustified um quiet and retreats when i'm angry and not scream or oh there <laughs> yeah no i i i rarely get angry but when i do um i don't even know what i do i have to ask my husband what do i do <laughs> i think i get quiet yeah um that's what i do but anyway i get quiet so i go hide yes. and make some more. What yes. if I said that maybe this whole thing was maybe a social experiment? Sure. How would you guys feel about that? Yeah, I've, I've thought about that, too. You know, my son thinks the exact same way that you do. Really? Yes, absolutely. He is completely on the same page that Megan's on, 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's him, you know, so there again, even yeah, in my home, there's differences of opinions. Yeah. And when he explains it, just oh, like Megan, are. yeah, what they say makes sense as well. It does. Definitely. If you guys haven't seen Megan's channel, could somebody put up the link to her channel, one of my uh, wrenches and also to Unjustified, please, and to share um, if you guys don't mind. Oh, thank you, Foxy Lady, for posting the link to, to No Inclination. I really appreciate that. Um, but no, I, I'm just trying to brainstorm ways that Shanann could have gotten help. The ways, you know, ways that this could did not have to happen, um, even though there was no prior violence coming out of Watts, you know, Chris Watts for, for anyone. Not, you know, he didn't torture animals that we know of. He didn't beat up on little kids in class. You know, there what was it, no prior, there was nothing. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine, Megan. Go right ahead, please, because I, I talk too much. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you know, I'm going to throw just a lot of what ifs out there. But so sure. what if the reason why, um, if we go to the whole, you know, social, ex that's the only way I know how to say it without <laughs> getting your sure. channel in trouble. So I call it a social experiment for today. Right. But, um, you know, what if the reason why Chris never showed any previous, you know, signs of violence or, um, you know, violent tendencies, because as far as the social experiment goes, what if they wanted, you know, women to believe that, or anyone to believe that if someone like Chris Watts can murder his entire family and not show any signs of it, you know, and just one day, murder his entire family to be with his mistress or whatever that he only knew for, you know, two months. Right. If someone like Chris Watts can do it, then what's stopping it from happening to yours, you know, from your significant yeah. other from doing it to you or your husband. And so what if it was to set fear um, into, you know, women all over the world and men, but sure. mostly, mostly aimed at women, mostly aimed at women. You, you're absolutely correct. But, um, yeah, that the, like I said, your theories are so amazingly convincing, and I, I I see your side of what could be absolutely. Yeah, what if you know? I mean, what if because it was such a bizarre, and that's another reason why it's so odd is this man was so laid back, so quiet, um, so different than the murderer that he became that that night. Um, and I've seen it explained, um, you know, that he always was that evil killer and he had a mask on his entire life, which is sort of what I believe. 
but I don't know, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. The other explanation would be exactly what you're saying, Megan, um, which is, again, so fascinating. One dollar. If I may. Oh, oh, wow. If I may. Um, Thank you. Go on, Russ. Yeah, um, in the in the uh, the sentences or the the statements that uh, two of you ladies just made, that he never showed any indication of that. Uh, every other comedian I ever heard that's part of their comedy routine that when they catch the mass murderer and they speak to the friends, the friends always say, "I'll never forget Rodney Dangerfield said it. He was such a calm man." And um, maybe I'm getting to be a real old man. But the, does everybody remember the, the uh, school shooting at Virginia Tech? Yes. I guess not. Um, <laughs> okay. No, I did. I so did trust this, a young man who, yeah. Uh, right. One young man got some machine guns and he sprayed them. And at that time, that was the most pe pe people killed at a school shooting. And everybody said nobody would have even thought that this kid came close. And right. his family didn't barely... They, they couldn't believe that this was the personality they had under the layers. And the police said, why do you say that? And they said, because he actually said two sentences in a row in one day. We, we were never even sure of his voice because of that. Right. I'll never forget. So I think the, the no indication could be a, an underlying factor of something laying, but now that you mentioned the mistress and that she could have you're right, you're absolutely it. right. Yeah, that's a that's right. a possibility. I mean, perhaps the mistress and my new friends right, saw that personality. Go. You did. I do have to go, my dear friends. Um, I hope you're gonna. Uh, oh, I hope well, I can come back one day. Sure. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely, right. Russell. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Russell. Yeah. Well, everybody Thank send you, me their yeah. links to their shows and everything, and we can see if we can join each other's groups and stuff like that. Awesome. Sounds good, Russ. Thank you. Thank you so much again, and you have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, Mexi says, I think it would be easier to understand the psychology portion of Chris if it were given, if we were, we were rather given all the truths to the case. But so much is a mystery. You're absolutely right, Mexi. And I think that, um, oh my gosh, I love Mexi's channel. If you guys haven't subscribed to him, please go over and do that right now. Um, bye, Cher, by the way. I love you bunches, hon. I'm so sorry um, that you have to leave. Have but I know that we will. I know we will reconvene tonight on Unjustified. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. There are so many facts that are held back, including a, a diagnosis for Chris Watts. Can someone please diagnose this man and figure, you know, figure something out? I, I don't know. Um, you know, I've talked to Dr. B before and uh, other, you know, psychological, you know, people who are in psychology and they don't see that he was a um, sociopath, a lot of them, or a narcissist. I, I think he may be a covert narcissist, but um, you're right. There are so many facts we don't know. And, and, and a lot of it would be, again, psychological evaluation, which I don't think this man has received. Or if he has, it's been kept secret. I actually had a highly qualified psychologist on the channel, and he actually took quite a lot of heat in the chat when he I know what oh. he seen professionally and it you know he is actually an expert he really is google him he's, sure. he's good. and he was giving his theory of what he's seen from chris through the interviews and his prison interview now granted he hadn't dug into the case like we have. So he wasn't looking at NK or none of that, only Chris. And I thought personally, what he had to offer us was very interesting. Um, a lot of people highly disagreed with him saying the borderline issue. And, you know, I'm not right. an expert and I haven't really looked into that, but I'm going to because so many people completely disagreed with the whole borderline, but I no, feel I like, that. yeah, I don't know. I don't right. know. I'm just assuming here, but I feel like there's borderline on many different spectrums and aspects. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't think he was putting it and 
putting it towards one borderline he was. Maybe it was to a different one. But he did think that Chris was a covert narcissist. Yes. Yes. Which you're, is how we're right. and none of us can actually tell you. Unless we have yeah. a degree ourselves, we can't we can't say he's is or isn't. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I've got an undergraduate psych degree, but I don't think that counts because I didn't go on with it. Um, but and I don't remember. I don't remember all that stuff because, again, I'm an airhead. But, you know, but I mean, just I don't know if any of you have read Lena's book. Um, uh, My Daddy is a Hero, but she lays it out out very concisely as well and that he was in fact a, co a covert narcissist um so that you know there are yeah. there are a few people from the psychology field that do agree with that theory um that right. i've run into but yeah and, and if that was the case boy he he kept that mask on his entire life and i wonder if anyone else ever saw any inkling of who he really was I don't think so. I don't think so. His sister hinted towards it. And I'm sure you know that um, his sister yeah. did hint towards it back in his younger when he was a kid and a teenager. His sister hinted towards he had issues. He had some mental issues and she personally believed he was on some sort of autism spectrum. Possibly. Right. That is definitely correct. said family. she knew he had some sort of mentality thing going on as a kid sure. and into a teenager. Weezer, I want to say no, it's not on Patreon tonight. I don't do Patreon. I was going to do Patreon once, but so it's many just, of my subscribers, you know, they just, just a buck or two. It may, it makes a difference. So I just sure. couldn't go through with it. You know, I just, I don't do Patreon, but I do have a members only chat. That's just like for the team members of Unjustified every Wednesday night. However, I'm not singling out my subscribers doing that because 24 hours after we do the members only, I put it public so all of my subscribers can see that as well. It's just a little something that I try to do for the members only. But no, I do not do Patreon. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to Patreon. And, I, and I'm not going to say anything. And, too, and I went ahead and I made an account. I probably... You did, you know, did start doing Patreon, but I said, nah, you know, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do it either. Um, but yeah, you should, you know, Kim, you're, you're, you're such an awesome, you have such a wonderful, amazing channel. I, you know, you could probably do anything you wanted to. <laughs> um, I just couldn't do it. I just can't do it. You know, I've been that person that ain't got an extra two bucks. I've been that person. I'm not going right. to do that. Right. You no, know, right. I'm just, no, no. This talking to me, I'm not, no, mm -mm. It ain't like I'm some Nancy Grace or something. I'm just Kim. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but you have that beautiful voice. And everyone will listen to you no matter where you go. <laughs> I just have a problem as far as, like, you know, channels that are saying um, that they want to get the truth out there. Channel creators saying, oh, I want the truth. Just specifically, I guess, maybe just in the Watts case or um, maybe not for Patreon, like, all over YouTube. But just by saying, oh, I really want to get the truth out there. And then, oh, but I have breaking news. And the only way you can hear the breaking news is if you come and pay for Patreon. And that's what right. I don't agree with. So Right. 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 No, I do understand mm -hmm. that. Right. I do understand that issue. And, and then the fact is, you know, that a lot of people, I mean, this is for fun. I do this for fun and, you know, for part of my hobby and part of my writing. But some people do it as a living, which is, you know, fine. You know, whatever they do, they do. But um so, yeah, I, I kind of see both sides, but no, I, I didn't go through with the Patreon thing either, but someday maybe, I don't know. Um, the way the bullies were chasing all of us and Kim oh, is, is, yeah, yeah, as wonderful as you are and Megan, I know you too. Gosh. Um, it, yeah, it's pretty bad. They That's were kinda chasing what everyone I, for a while there and I was thinking, well, I don't want the public. Yep. That's Me too. That's what our lives going to be about tonight, actually. Um Crafton, I talked to Crafton back before Christmas and we were supposed to do a live a long time ago and things has happened. I was building an office. He was moving. I don't know, but we're going to do it tonight and it's kind of going to reflect around all the craziness in this case and the sure. different sides and how people just cannot seem to agree to disagree without literally going to each other's throats through keyboards. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. 
isn't that crazy? And I don't care. Again, you know, I said with politics, I don't care what side you're on of what, who cares? You're my friend. You're my friend. I won't ever want. And who cares what side you're on of a murder case where all we all want is justice for these beautiful people, no matter where that leads. Who cares what you believe? Look at this panel right now. Us three. Each one of us. Yep. Totally different. Yeah. At the same time, we all love each other, man. Exactly. <laughs> it's at uh, 7 p.m. And that's so basic. I mean, it's so it's simple to understand. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I and Eileen says, I love all you ladies. We love you too, hon. Even though we may all may have different opinions, we can be adults and have conversations in a healthy way. And yes, Kim, your voice is amazing. It sure is. No, oh, my gosh. But yeah. <laughs> really not. <laughs> what do I think? I thank y'all, but it's what, not. what's crazy to me is just the fact that, and I brought this up in my last live stream, but is people are literally like threatening each other and fighting with each other over, yes. to be honest, two families that we don't even know. Yeah. Right. You know, we only know right. what yeah. they've told us and what law enforcement and the mainstream media has told us. And to be at each other's throats over you know like i said two families that we don't even know is crazy to me oh my god it's gotten so bad even children even i've seen where even kids people's kids are being come at yes you're right that. sherry you're right. There, was, there was some horrendous stuff said against her kids oh my god before Christmas, it was horrendous. Who could even say that about a kid, right? A child, I know. And I know and that when I, yeah, I, I've been through that kind of bullying too. It didn't get this bad with the Watts case yet, but with the Grey Gardens, people knew. They printed out aerial photos of my house. They um, uh, they found out, they found my husband and my brother on LinkedIn, and they knew my husband's middle name, and really scary stuff that these what? people will go yeah. I just don't get it. It's almost like the Stephen King book, you know, the one. Yes, Misery. It? Yes, it's crazy. Yes. It's like, exactly. man, agree to disagree. Exactly. You know, and they, you know, they don't care. And then they, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what their logic is. But then they get into, you know, well, uh, you talk to Kim and I don't like Kim. Or you talk to Tanya and I don't like yeah. you. That, that's crazy. It's very high school. I just don't get it. It's high school. It's it's elementary, so much. man. It's yeah. like, you know, they're over here on the merry-go-round and you're over here on the swing and you don't get close to each other. And if you even get halfway in the middle, oh, God, she's talking yes. to this one. You know, we hate her now. It's yes. Crazy. Yeah, she's, she, we don't like her anymore, so you can't play with her anymore. <laughs> if you do, I will never speak to you again, and I'll steal your lunchbox. <laughs> crazy. It's like first grade, man. Oh, very much so. And I don't understand um, adult, and mostly women. I hate to say that, but, you know, it's it's mostly us. Oh, it is. Oh, it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. There's a few men that kind of tag along into it, but yeah. not many. Most of the men are like, you know, <laughs> I see it They're this way, and that's the way it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, so Mr. Sure. Randy, yeah. he sees it different. My own husband doesn't agree with what I say, right? Right. But it ain't like, oh, I hate you. Um, get out of my house. I mean, come on. No, exactly. And and again, I like I said, even even something as 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 um, you know, critical as political views, I would never again get rid of a friend because they don't agree with me politically or, or, or even religiously. You know, none of that stuff would matter as long as the person's a good person. You love the person. Who cares? And, yeah. and especially something as, as um, really, although it's important and, and, you know, life altering, the crimes that we discuss, our opinion of the crimes could not affect our, why would that affect our friendships in any way? I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, yeah. I, can't, I can't even wrap my head around it, to be honest. I'm like, damn, she's truly yeah. attacking the hell out of her just because she don't think this way and she thinks that way. And I'm like, damn. How ridiculous! Isn't, isn't that what true that crime is about? <laughs> like oh, having differences of opinions about the case. So that's that's weird. I think absolutely. a lot of the people, or at least some people, I think a lot of them are there on purpose to cause this chaos going on. Specifically sure. in the Watts case, anyways. I don't know about other cases, and I think that they're maybe instigating.
people that already have that negativity inside them to come out? Does that, yeah. that make sense? I think so too. Yeah, absolutely. Right. No, I so agree. I think so some might be natural and some might be there to instigate. Um, especially with the not to bring them into it, but especially with the resex we're doing and causing a lot of division. Right. Um, you know, right. and the pro Watts thing and the pro resex and or Oh, that's crazy. Know, They're I, both victims. They're both victims. Yeah, both families we're Cindy's are victims worse and, and Yes. Cindy's worse. It's just it's crazy. It's like Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. But, Nobody. And I've been lucky enough, believe it or not, I probably shouldn't say this, I probably jinx myself, but I haven't got a lot of bullying, which has oh, been quite wood. nice. I've been more Thank bullied goodness. by YouTube than I have um, just regular people. So Sure, right. The, the YouTube, knock on wood. whatever that you call them, their, their laws or their whatever they call them, terms of service. I don't know. Well, um, yeah, no, exactly. And that's the problem that I have with, with my theory is because my theory is literally stated in the guidelines like you can't like it doesn't say in youtube's you know as it, far as hate speech goes you can um it doesn't say you can't accuse a mistress of murder or you can't accuse law enforcement of a cover-up or right. you can't you know whatever but my theory is stated in there three times that you can't say it or you'll get a strike on your channel or your channel wow your channel. so that's okay. why and i i, I learned to reword a lot sure. of things and almost speak in code, but it's oh almost boy. like that particular sentence. I can't, I don't know how else to reword it without, especially on a live stream. Like I could get away with it, you know, maybe just in a regular video or something, but you're, you're risking a lot more, I think, with live streams when you. Oh, definitely. Right, so, right, right. Oh, because yeah. Lives are like exhausting. Yeah. They're exhausting for the host. They really are. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, you literally. When Go on. Oh, sorry. You, but you literally can't say that a tragic event was fabricated. No. Even though, even though there's many holes in the narrative and inconsistencies and nothing adds up, but no, you're not allowed to say that it might have been orchestrated. So that's the trouble that I'm having as far as uh, sure. the library goes. And so. Well, I just really don't get that either because that's your opinion. And I mean, just because it differs from others, then why should you catch heat as long as you're going off the facts? And you do. Right. Why you catch heat for the way you see things in your mind. That's ridiculous. That's the exactly. way you see it. And you're just talking about it. How is that wrong? Exactly. I don't understand that at all. I, I don't understand why they can't let us have opinions about every single thing. You know, I mean. If I say the Titanic was sunk by the U.S. government, you know, what, whatever. I mean, that, that, that's just my opinion mm -hmm. of something, a, a very tragic event. I don't understand why they would, um, why they would do that to you, why they would censor your opinions about a, about a murder case. I don't get that. I really don't. Yeah, it's very telling to say the least, in my opinion, but. Oh, Yeah. No, yeah, I see that. I see where you're, yeah, exactly how you're thinking with that. Definitely. Like, I, I literally just went over the anatomy of one a few months ago. Well, like, a lot of few months ago, probably in July, June or July. I just, you know, straight from a website where they talk about the whole anatomy of them and how they're orchestrated. And sure. two months later, I get a strike for hate speech. So, oh my <laughs> gosh. That's my, that was my first, oh, uh, wow. okay, well, I better be careful here. I wow! Don't get it? I really don't. I don't either. Um, I think a lot of people this is from Rabbit Dog. I think a lot of people on here get away get way too emotionally close to the families of crimes. I agree, and I feel and feel some moral compulsion to protect them. It's very strange, and you're you're absolutely right. Um, but I think that we see other families, the victims, as being. A, Okay, there, but by the grace of God, go I, you know, could that have been my family? So I think we all identify um, in that way with the victims of, you know, families of victims of crime or even the perpetrators, the families of the perpetrators. Um, so I, I sort of understand that psychologically. Um, but um, let's see here. Uh, very possibly true. And God forbid anyone thinks for themselves and sees the good. Exactly. Right, right, right. Right. That's probably why. And I don't understand it. I really don't. There's not 
it, 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 I can understand maybe things like with the Sandy Hook thing that the, the you know, people who were saying the children did not really die. And um, of course, that's not true. I can sort of understand YouTube censoring that kind of thing. But with the Watts case and um, what everyone, everyone I've heard saying, whatever they've been saying, none of that should be censored because it is opinion. Um, you know, I don't know. But um I think if nobody has any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I know Kim's got a show here in about an hour and a half. Correct, Kim, I think? Yes, ma'am. Seven o'clock, and I shall be there. Um, yeah, me too. Thank you. Yeah, and awesome. Come Megan. up with us, too. Yay. Come on up. Anybody that wants to join the panel can. I think I can awesome. have a pan on there, but it's pretty oh, yeah. much focused around all this craziness. Um, Craft and Barnes. Um, I've watched several of his videos. The very first one I watched was he was, he's like a parody. He's a radio talk show host and he does like parodies. I think of things yeah. and it's on the lighter side, but he actually is getting to the point of all the bullying harassment. And that's, that's kind of what he does, but he does it more on a, a lighter side. Oh, know? I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, that's going to be oh. awesome to hear him and um, his opinion of what's going on with the crazy Watts case discussions and why, <laughs> you know, that, that'll be fun. Yeah, he's going to be straight up just there because he, he can't set up all of his equipment to do what he does on his show. So he's sure. just going to be there talking to us, answering questions, just things like that, you know, just like we're doing now. Oh, very cool. I can't wait. I will be there and I hope I see all you guys over there. And could one of my mods again put up um, Unjustified's channel, a link to her channel, because we will all be there shortly. And thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you to all my thank guests. You. Thank you. Oh, definitely. Thank you, my mods and thank you for everybody. Having for watching. Me, oh, definitely. Love you guys. Um, have a good night and I'll, I'll see you guys over on Unjustified shortly. That's, That's right. good. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.